Okay, good morning everyone. It's really a zechot to be here this morning to see all the amazing work of my dear friend Rabbi Yisraeli. Just to walk in and hear the last five minutes of the drush. I don't know if you realize what you have standing in front of you. The, the chachmas hatar, the wisdom and the knowledge and the, the depth and the breadth of shas that is on, literally on his fingertips is, is uh, overwhelming. It's inspiring, and you are fortunate that this is your Rav, and this is your Manhig, your leader, and you have a lot, a lot to learn from him. So make sure you stay in the right place all the time. You'll, you'll continue to grow, and you'll see tremendous brachot of Torah in your life. Which reminds me of something I heard many years ago, possibly about 25 years ago, from one of my principal rabbim in learning, Rav Moshe Kalevsky Zatzal, Rav Yaakov Moshe Kaleski said over the following, it was, I believe, Erev Yom Kippur one year, and he gave us a shmuz, he gave us some words of inspiration. And he said over that in the Ashkenazi Siddur, we say the following words in Shmon Esrei. Hashiveinu avinu letoratecha. Our Father, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, return us to your Torah. And you should bring us close to the avodah, to the service of you, Hashem. And then allow us to bring us close to complete shuva lefanecha before you. Blessed is Hashem who wants shuva, He wants us to do shuva. Said Rabbi Kalevsky, you see from these words of our Siddur, the following idea. What is the first thing that will bring a person to the ways of tshuva? What is the most important thing that will open their eyes and allow them to realize, I have to do tshuva, I'm doing something that's wrong. The first thing we ask HaKadosh Baruch is, Hashiveinu avinu letoratecha, bring me close, return me to your Torah. When a person is living a life of Torah, when they are learning Torah, when they are living Torah, when they are keeping Torah, so then everything else falls in line. You learn Torah, you're able to come close to HaKadosh Baruch in the service of Hashem. And then after that, you begin to do real tshuva. And then you find the chen, you find the favor in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaRoitzeh b'seshuva HaKadosh Baruch He wants tshuva. You think he wants us to run around all year long doing the wrong thing? Think he wants us to come to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and not have our hearts in the davening and the tefillah? He's a roitzah, he wants the rotsan of HaKadosh Baruch that he wants us to do the tshuva, he wants us to come close to him, he wants us there. The only way, the starting point of it all, I think as Rabbi Yisrael was saying at the end of his drasha is, you've got to be connected to Torah. If that's your connection in life, so then everything else falls in place. But the minute that we become disconnected from the Torah, disconnected from our learning, disconnected from the places that are teaching the Torah mitit, so then everything else begins to fall along the wayside as well. So number one, you're in the right place. You have the right rav, you have the right classes that are going on, Stay deeply connected because the Reitzah B'Tshuva, HaKadosh Baruch Himself, this is what He wants of us. You know, as we approach the day of Yom Kippur, and we are all going to stand for hour upon hour upon hour, clapping, as we call it in Yeshiva, we're clapping al chait. we are pounding on our hearts for all the, asking Hashem for all the forgiveness of all the things that we did wrong. There are many different things that we have to admit to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we didn't do right this previous year. There are many things that we have to do. I remember one year in Ner Yisrael, in the big base Midrash over there, there's maybe close to 900, 1,000 people that were praying on, Rosh, on Yom Kippur. And there was an older man on the other side of the Beit Midrash. I was on one side. He was on the other side of the Beit Midrash. And every single time that there was a silent Shmon Esrei, and we were all saying, are we doing? This man kept crying. Crying and crying and crying. Now this was an older man. 
his, his son, his son-in-law was one of the Hanhala, one of the administrators in the yeshiva. This person was a tzaddik himself, you just had to look at his face, radiating Kedusha. And yet he's standing on, Rosh Hash, on Yom Kippur, doing this video all day long, and every time he does video, he's crying. He's the only one you hear crying in the Beit Midrash. So I remember, I'm standing on the other side, and you keep hearing, oh, he's crying, oh, he's crying. I thought to myself, ay, nebach, this poor guy, he must have done so many sins this year, he can't stop crying during the, during the vidui. And then I realized, now I'm really the nebach. Because I'm sure that I did much more than this man. If you look at this person, you'll see he couldn't even hurt a fly. What could he have done wrong? I'm looking at this person. He's crying and I'm not crying. And I'm sure that I did thousands and thousands and thousands of things much worse than he did that year. Many years ago, I was Zechir bin Yushalayim for the Yom Em Neroim, Elo Rashani Yom Kippur. And I dive in at the minion of Rav Moshe Sternbach, who's one of the Gedoyle Yisrael today, one of the great poskim of our generation. And when they were taking seat assignments, so I went to the Gambai and I asked him, could you give me a seat as close as possible to Rav Moshe Sternbach? I wanted to see what it was like when this man was davening on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. So I was a young guy, I was somewhat newly married. There were a lot of people that had a lot of seniority in that shul, and I was just kind of passing through for a few months. And the Gabbai looked at me and said, please, I'm only here one, one Rosh Hashanah. Please give me a seat close to him. I want to see what it's like when he davens. So they ended up giving me a seat like one, one row back or so off to the side. I was right near him. I got to watch him the entire Yomim Neroyim. The biggest chizuk that I got though was Erev Yom Kippur Mincha. The whole shul comes together, Erev Yom Kippur Mincha, we know we start saying the vidui. And Rav Moshe Sternbach, a tzaddik, Yisrael Oilam, learns all day long, writes svarim all day long. He, I don't know if his eyes ever saw anything that you see when you walk into Ralph's. He never saw anything. And on Erev Yom Kippur, at Mincha, he gets into the vidui, he's crying like a baby, like a baby. And he doesn't stop the entire minchi, he's just crying. So we all have things that we have to think to ourselves. What did we do this year? What kind of a tshuva do we need? What do we need to feel sorry for? So I'd like to focus in maybe on one of the al today. That we will say time and time again, and we have to understand the depth of what this means, because it affects so many areas of our Yiddishkeit, of our learning, of our davening, of our tefillah, of our midot. We are confessing to you, HaKadosh Baruch, and asking your forgiveness for the sin that we committed in front of you. For a heart that is filled with confusion. The heart that is filled with confusion the heart that is wishy-washy, the heart that itself can make the right choice, says the Machzor, on this a person has to cry buckets of tears about. Because as long as your heart is confused, and as long as you don't have things clear inside of your heart, then it's going to affect every single area of your life. It's not easy to wake up for shacharit in the morning when your heart is telling you, stay right where you are. It's, you're fine in bed. You went yesterday to shacharit. It's not very easy to control your midot when your wife is driving you crazy right before Yom Tov because she has to send you to the store for the sixth time that day because she forgot the vanilla sugar. What's wrong with regular sugar? No, I need vanilla sugar, otherwise we can't have Rosh Hashanah. There's only 45 minutes left before Rosh Hashanah. No, no, I need it right now, I need it right now. If you have timhon levav, oh, your wife is going to hear it from you right now. And you guys are smarty, I feel sorry for your wives. Ashkenazi, we can get away with, ah, oh, smarty, ah. Oh. 
But if your heart is not confused, if your heart is yashar, is straight, and you know what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from you, and you know what is right, and you know what is wrong, then when you will find yourself in a situation where HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs your midot tovot, you'll be able to control yourself. There's a beautiful maisa with an avreich in kolal in Yerushalayim, Yerach Kodesh. And he and his wife and family lived in one town in Yerushalayim and his in-laws lived in another town in Yerushalayim. But it was far enough away that it was a, a good walk to get there. That's a good way to live with your in-laws. It should always be a far enough walk away that, before you have to get there. So it was, uh, Rosh Hashanah was coming and the wife said, you know, every year we always go to Rosh Hashanah, we go to my, my parents' house for the first meal, for the first su'udah. I'd like to go back again this year. And the husband said, no problem. He's a good husband, listens to his wife, wants to make her happy, it's Rosh Hashanah, no problem. So he says, okay, you know, well, let's start getting ready, we have to start packing up the bags, and we have to get the kids ready, so we can catch the last bus from our neighborhood to her, their neighborhood, so we can get there before Rosh Hashanah, we have time to settle in, and I can go to shul, everything will be fine. No problem, his wife says. So, they're getting ready throughout the day, and the husband looks at his watch, and he realizes that it's getting later than they realize. And he comes to his wife and says, Dear, you know, it's getting late. The last bus runs, stops running in about a half an hour. We have to start getting ready to go. He says, No, no, no problem. I'm getting everything. I'm getting everything. I'm ready to go out the door. Comes back a half an hour later. His wife's still in the middle of picking out one outfit and another outfit. He says, You know, we really, we really have to go. The, the buses will stop running. We won't be able to get to your parents' house. I'm so sorry. Maybe we'll take a taxi instead. Fine. His wife keeps getting ready, and you know how it works. She schleps it out a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Get the kids, get them dressed, baths, everything. By the time they get onto the street, they walk out. There's not a single bus, there's not a single taxi. The streets are empty. Rosh Hashanah is coming. Now this Avreich did not get Davin Mincha, the last Mincha of the year before Rosh Hashanah. And now he realizes that the only way they're going to get to his in-law's house is if they start walking now. They have to start walking so they'll make it there in time to be there at least for Arvit, at least they'll get there for the, for the prayers at night. So they start walking. And the wife feels a little bit bad over here. She caused it, everything's late. And as they're walking, he sees the sun is going down. He didn't have a mincha yet. He runs into a shul, and he davens the fastest mincha of his life, last mincha of the year, right before Rosh Hashanah, and he runs out his wife with the babies, and they start pushing the carriage again. And as they're walking to her parents' house, it's getting darker and darker and darker, and he realizes that Marv already started, but he's a good man. He doesn't leave his wife at the, at the bottom of the apartment building. He walks her all the way up to the top, makes sure she's with her mother, and then he runs to shul. He runs into the shul. They're in the middle of Shemona Esrei. He missed Baruch Hu, he missed Shema, he missed uh, uh, Kaddish. It's Rosh Hashanah. It matters to this man. He just blew Mincha, and now the first Rosh Hashanah, the first Marav of the, of the new year, it's a disaster. Finishes davening. He goes over to his father-in-law, who is in the shul, wishes him a good year, Shana Tova, smiling, and he says to himself in his mind the following, no matter what is going to happen tonight, no matter how upset I should be with my wife because she ruined my era of Rosh Hashanah and the beginning of my Rosh Hashanah, no matter how much, I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to control myself. I'm not going to make a joke. I'm not going to make her feel bad. I'm not going to be sarcastic. I'm not going to say a word as if nothing happened. She did nothing wrong. He comes into the house after, the, after shul. His wife feels very bad. She knows exactly what happened. And he goes over to his wife and he says, Shana Tova, and he goes to his children, he picks them up, he kisses them, he gives them brachot. 
He sits at the table the whole night. He says, Dive Tori, he sings beautiful Zmirot. They're eating the apples and the honey and all the simonim, everything. And it's a beautiful, beautiful sauda. And the husband is smiling and the wife is smiling and the in-laws are smiling. Everyone's in a great mood. When the meal is over, they're supposed to walk home. And the wife begins to think to herself, oh, now he's going to get it. Now he's going to lay into me. This whole time my parents were there, the kids were awake. Now he's going to tell me how angry he really is. But they walk home, and the husband just says, wow, what a beautiful meal it was with your parents. They're such amazing people. So happy that we came here this year. And he starts telling her beautiful Divrei Torah about Rosh Hashanah, Yom Adin, the brachas that they should have for the up and coming year. And he doesn't say a word. This man testified on himself. He never had such a good year as he had that following year. He said in the Zechot, that he stayed strong in the Zechot, that he didn't hurt his wife's feelings in the Zechot, that he knew what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants of him, not what the heart fools a person into thinking that it wants. HaKadosh Baruch Hu showered him with bracha after bracha after bracha. Our hearts are so confused, they're so cloudy, they're so filled with emotions. When the Gemara says, Rahman Aliba boy, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants the heart, what part of our heart does he want? He wants the part that's confused, that doesn't know what it's doing? You have a pure lave inside of you. Lave Torah, Bali, Elohim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu put a beautiful heart inside of everybody. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants it to remain that way. He wants the heart. He wants the heart good and firm and secure. Without all the confusion and the murkiness and the cloudiness and the schmutz that gets inside of there. So I was thinking this year on Rosh Hashanah about an idea that the Gemara tells us that perhaps could give us a little understanding of why the heart remaining the way that it is in a pure state and why we're working on getting into that place on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is so important. The Gemara says, Am Rabbi Avoho, Lame Toikin B'Shoifah Sha'ayil. Why did we blow the shofar with a shofar, the horn of an isle of a ram? Rabbi Yisraeli, you blow the shofar here? Yes, of course. Why did Rabbi Yisrael blow the shofar with the horn of an ayah? So the Gemara says, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu the following, Tiku lofanai shofar shal ayah, I want you to blow in front of me the shofar that is made out of the horn of an ayah of a ram, Kedei she'azkir lechem ha'kedaz Yitzchak ben Avraham. So I'll remember, I'll remind myself about the akeda of Yitzchak, the son of Avram. Umala ani aleichem kilu akadatem atzmichem lefanai, and I'll look at it as if you, yourselves, sacrificed yourself in front of me on this beautiful and glorious day of Rosh Hashanah. Everybody knows this Gemara. Everybody heard the, sh- the shofar blast for 20, 30, 40 years of their life. Everybody knows we're reminding ourselves of Akedas Yitzchak. What was the enormous feat of the Akedas Yitzchak, that on Rosh Hashanah, the greatest zechus, the zechut that we can have is, Hashem says, if you will blow an ayos, re, a horn, and you will also remember what Akedas Yitzchak was like, I'll remember Akedas Yitzchak, and I'll look at you as if you are bringing yourself before me as a korban, as a sacrifice on Rosh Hashanah. We know that in the opening verses of Akedas Yitzchak, the Pasik says, Velokim Nisa es Avraham. HaKadosh Baruch Hu tested Avraham Avinu with the biggest and the most grueling test that he had been through up until this point. Remember, Avraham had Lech Lecha, you have to leave everything behind and go to a land, you don't even know where you're going. He was thrown into the Kivshan Aish, he was thrown there by Nimrod into the fiery furnace, and yet he went there, Muna Shleiman, HaKadosh Baruch Hu saved his life. 
had his wife was abducted not once but twice. He had a famine. When he got to the Holy Land and the Treasure Land, he has to go back then elsewhere. Avraham Avinu had a very challenging and difficult life. But the only place that it says in the Torah that HaKadosh Baruch is actually testing Avraham Avinu is Akedat Yitzchak. This one is an Isoyan, a challenge that, that trumps all of the other ones. And the Ramban writes over there, what was so challenging about this and what is the purpose of every Nisoy and every challenge that a person will go through in life? Because HaKadosh Baruch who knows the kochot that are inside of a person, he knows the potential that is in there even when the person themselves don't know what they have. And he brings the Nisoyon to be mighty koyach el to bring out the strength, the potential that's inside and make it a reality for that person. Akedas Yitzchak was the exact opposite of the life of Avram. Avram was a man of chesed. Avram was a man who put down all of the Avodah Zohar in the world, especially the crazy ones that said, sacrifice your children. And now Hashem says, Avram Avinu, go to the mountain, and everyone's going to know that you took your son, your only son, the one that you love so much, Yitzchak Avinu, and you'll shecht him on the mountain, that'll be the end of him. And the Midrash and Tanchuma tells us that Avram Avinu took his son Yitzchak, like a father walks his son down to the chuppah, with the same simcha, the same joy, because I'm doing the ratzon abari oilam Hashem's will. Yitzchak was a young boy? No. Yitzchak was 37 years old at the time. You think a 37-year-old young man who has just, in, has just been Yorish, he inherited all of the wisdom of his father for 37 years, learning Torah day and night together with his father. He knows he's supposed to go on to become the next leader of Klau Yisrael. You think it's easy to tie yourself down on the altar and let your father shecht you, your father who taught you world is all about chesed and rachmanut and kindness and mercy? And Yechazal tell us that Yitzchak told his father, Abba, I'm so excited to do the Ratzon of Hashem right now and perform this mitzvah. Tie me down tight. Because maybe out of the sheer excitement, my neck is going to move when you're shechting me. And it'll be puzzle. It'll not be a good shechita. And then the whole thing is worthless. Please, Abba, tie me down. I want to do the right thing. And at the end of the day, because that Avram was able to overcome his Nisayan, and Yitzchak was able to overcome his Nisayan, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings into the world a, an ayo whose horns are stuck in the svach, in the brush. And that ends up going tachas in place of his son Yitzchak. And there is the korban that is brought. Says the Rebbeinu Shailam, if you will remind me of the Korban of Yitzchak and of Avram, and I saw how much they worked to overcome the Nisayan of their life, I will remember you at this time as well. And I will look at it as if you are offering yourself as a Korban to me. What is the Pshat? There are famous words in the Mesilah Sisharim. The Amchal is writing about the chayvas ha'adam ba'alama, the purpose, the obligations of a person in this world. And he says, ki ikr mitzius ha'adam ba'alam hazeh. The main objective of a person in this world who rak l'kayim mitzvot is to perform the mitzvot v'la'avod and to serve Hashem and to stand up strong in the challenges that a Kodesh Baruch Hu gives a person in life. So just parenthetically, one side thing over here. It says, your job is l'kayim mitzvot v'la'avod. To perform mitzvot and to serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu. If you're keeping mitzvot, aren't you serving Hashem? If you come to shul every single morning, 5.30 now, 5.15, 5.30, you come every morning 5.30, and then you do 
Abed Yomi first and then Sichot. Sichot, Abed Yomi, Davidi, however you do it. Can't you tell HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'm an Eben Hashem, I'm serving you. If you hear on Rosh Hashanah, which I'm sure was beautiful, with all the intensity and all the arousing, davening in the Joshot, so you're doing mitzvot. Aren't you over Hashem? Aren't you serving Hashem? You keep Shabbat. You don't tear the toilet paper. You don't get in the car. You don't turn on the light. You make sure that all your food is kosher. You're being mekai mitzvot. Aren't you serving Hashem? Say the Mepharshim on the Ramachal over here, a person can keep all of the mitzvot and never serve Hashem. Because if I'm doing the mitzvot in my life because, you know, it's like cool to wake up early in the morning right now and everybody's talking about it, so I'll go. My wife, she smiles at me when I come home. She made me a nice breakfast. I wake up early, I do sikhot, I do amad yomi, I daven. That's over Hashem. You're being mekai mitzvot for a lot of good reasons. But a person is not serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You're only over Hashem when you're doing the mitzvot because HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded me to do the mitzvah. And I'm doing this mitzvah because HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants me to. Will you get bracha for doing it? Yes. Will your life be better? Yes. We have better shalom bayi than better children. Yes, it's all true. That's all the benefits. But the reason I'm coming early in the morning and I'm learning Torah and I'm davening and everything and keeping kosher and spending my money on Jewish education is why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants me to. And when I do that, I'm over in Hashem, I'm serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But the last thing he writes is, the reason you came to this world is, and what we have to get used to in, in this world is, La'amod benisayon. A person has to stand up to the challenges of life. We can never ask for a life without nisyonot. Everybody will have nisyonot. Even the goy on the street has nisyonot. He'll tell you all about it if you ask. Hashem made a world where there's going to be nisyonot. Because that's what brings out the koyach that's inside of us. It makes us greater who we are. And what does HaKadosh Baruch Hu want? He wants to see one thing. I'll send you the challenge. I'll send you the test. Tailor made exactly for you, for your neshama, for your midot, for your situation in life. But what's your job? To be an omed v'nisayan. An omed is a Russian of amud, a pillar. A person has to be a pillar of nisyonot. That when they come, I strengthen my emunah, my bitachin. I realize what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants me. I dig deep inside of myself. And I pull out the kochot, the potential, the abilities that I never realized that I had before. We all know the famous Pasuk, Shlomo Melech says that Sheva Yibot Tzadik Vikam, a Tzadik will fall down seven times, but he'll keep getting back up. But a Rasha falls down, what, once? What's the Pasuk Rav Yisraeli? Okay, yes, okay. The Tzadik will fall down seven times and he keeps getting back up. A Rasha goes down once, he's gone. What is the difference between a Tzadik and a Rasha? A tzad, if he doesn't know, that means there's probably no such Pasuk. That's the, what does it mean? It means that a Tzadik will fall. Tzadikim don't fall. Tzadikim don't have struggles. You know, sometimes you read these biographies about the Gedolei Yisrael. From the time that they were born till the time they died, they never did a chait. They never struggled. They never had anything wrong with them. It's not true. They also had Nisyonot. They also had Yitzharaz. They also had troubles they went through. They also had challenges in their life. They also did. Every single person, look at all of Torah, look at all of Tanakh. It's filled with the greatest people in history who had struggles and challenges they had to overcome. But a tzaddik, he falls, he keeps getting back up. I'm oymid. I don't lay down for the count. There's no TKO punches over here when a person gets punched out. He keeps going and going and going and going. A rasha, a wicked person, the opposite. He gets pummeled by the nisoyen. He gets hit over the head. 
and he's down for the count, and he says, that's it, I lost. I lost the battle. Says HaKadosh Baruch you know what I want from you? I want you to beat Sadiqim. I want you to realize that the nature of life is going to be, there will be a keda, There will be Nisayon. There will be Kivshan Aish. There will be people that try to get into your life that do things that are not, that are not okay. There will be Yetzirahs. There will be all these things. And they will be challenging and Nisayonot in your life. But uh, the, the Nisayon and Nas is also to lift up. It will lift you up in this world. And you'll become a greater person. You know what this, the root is why we don't overcome the Nisayonot of our life? Why it is that we fail? You know, we always hear this, this line, HaKadosh Baruch would never give a person a Nisayon they can't overcome. Yeah, Rabbi, so how come I failed the test? How come I failed? If HaKadosh Baruch really would never give me any sign that I can't overcome, I should never fail. Why did I fail? And the answer is, because Timhon Levav. We have a heart inside of us that is so confused and so murky and so detached from the emes, from the truth. That when HaKadosh Baruch Hu sends an Isai in our way, suddenly the emotions begin filling us up. The tithes begin filling us up. The Yetzar begins filling us up. The confusion begins to confound us. And then when we're supposed to be an Oymed, a pillar of strength, to overcome the challenge that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us, to become greater as a result, to reach places in our life that we never imagined that we could be, suddenly... We crumble under the pressure of the confused heart. And we fail the Nisayan, we fail the test that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us as a benefit, not as a detriment. So perhaps as we approach the day of Yom Kippur, and we will clap al chait so many times we will be misvad we will admit to our sins and we will feel bad. We have to have charot, we have to feel bad for what we did wrong. We have to go down to the root and the source. And when we say these words, I'm begging you, Rebbeinu Sha'ilam, for the up and coming year, clean out the heart. Clean out the dirt. Clean out the doubt and the confusion so that when you're going to send me the Nisayan that for sure everybody's going to have over, over the year, you can't live without Nisayan. You'll never become great. As Rav Hirsch writes in Tehillim, he says that a person should think to themselves the following. Sometimes we look, we feel like we have these major Nisayanot in our life. And we look around, we don't see other people having the same Nisayan. How come my brother doesn't have any sign? My sister doesn't have that. My neighbor doesn't have it. The guy in shul doesn't have it. How come I'm the only one going through this Nisayan? It's so big, it's so overwhelming. How come only me? Says Rav Hirsch, the bigger the Nisayan, the bigger the compliment from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he sees that inside of you is so much kochot that you didn't bring out yet that he needs to test you in a way that's going to transform you and make you into a greater person. So we say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, please, bring your power washer and clean out my heart, this Yom Kippur. Get rid of the confusion. Get rid of the doubt that's in there. All the wishy-washiness that I have that makes it hard for me to commit myself to you completely, to be an omid ben and please, HaKadosh Baruch, I'm asking you. And if we do that, and we do it sincerely, then when you emerge from Yom Kippur, your heart's not the same anymore. It's not a heart with holes in it. It's not a heart with rips and tears in it. It's a heart that is shalem, believe of shalem, a whole heart to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a heart that is secure and that is confident and courageous to make choices and decisions that are going to be with strength and with, a, with an ach, with a unity with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and with a kirvas elokim. I want to leave you off with one maisa, a fascinating story that I saw recently. It goes back to the days of Nazi Germany. 
And there was a small town in Vienna called, I think it was called uh, Rako, Ravko. And in that town, at first the Germans, the Nazis didn't come in. And at a certain point they decided that this is the next on the list of the towns they're going to destroy. And they had to get all of the people they were calling up into the legions of the Nazi war, war machine. They put them in a little place not far from Rafko where they were training them. What was the training that they were giving to these new soldiers? They had to train them to not have a caring heart. They had to train them to rip out all vestige of humanity from inside of them so that when the women and the children would be screaming and crying, when the husbands would be screaming for their wives and their children, and it would be chaos and pandemonium, and the normal human being has a heart, and their heart would begin to melt, the Nazis had to be strong. They had to be strong that they would not let anything affect them, not a single emotion, so they could just go brutus, brutal, brutal, brutally and kill everybody around them. They finally came into town. And they set up shop. And the head commander of this troop was a man by the name of Wilhelm Rosenbaum. And a volatile Nazi German Yamach Shemo just he lived to kill Jews. And they were rounding up all the Jews, and some of them were going off to work, and some were going off to do other menial things, and it was and some were already beginning to get sent off to the to the concentration camps. And this man is going through the list of all the names of all the Jews that live in this town, Rafkom. And he's going through the, al the, al the alphabet, A, B, C, and he gets to R. And he sees in the letter R, there's a family with the last name, a Jewish family with the last name Rosenbaum. His name is also Rosenbaum. Suddenly his face turns red. He starts foaming at the mouth. He takes his whip. He starts whipping at the table. And he says, how dare these Jewish swine! They steal my name. For that, they're going to die. And he says to his command, get quickly, get the Rosenbaum family over here. And so they bring the father, the mother, and the sister. And they drag him in front. And the mother and the sister are looking at the man. He says, Rosenbaum? Yes. Kills the mother and the sister like that. And then he beats the father to a pulp. How dare you take my name? He beats him to a pulp and then he kills him. Standing next to him is a couple. There was a, a very unfortunate side of Klau Yusel in the, in the Holocaust. They were called the Jewish couples. They were Jews. They basically traded in their lives to be able not to get killed and they worked for the Nazis. So he turns to the cop and he says, there's a son whose name is Sammy on this list, I want the boy here also. And the capo who turned off his emotions, suddenly his emotions and his heart come on again, and he rides in his wagon to go and pick up the boy. And the boy's out in the yard doing some kind of work that him and other kids are supposed to be doing. And he sees the capo, and the capo says, Sammy, you have to come with me. And he says, where are my parents? Where's my sister? He says, they're killed already, aren't they? I already heard what happened. And now you're coming to take me, right? You're going to kill me as well. And the couple hangs his head down in shame. And he said, it's not your fault. He said, but before we go to this Nazi, he said, can we please stop at my house first? I need to do one thing. So they get into the car and they, they go to the house. And the cop has to follow him into the house to make sure he doesn't run away. And he goes into his kitchen, he opens up the cabinet, he pulls out two candles, two candles, and two more candles, six candles all together, and he lights them all. Two for his father, two for his mother, and two for his sister. 
And then there in the kitchen, over the candles, this little boy, nine years old, he says Kaddish for his family. The kapo is trying very hard to hold back the tears as he watches. And Sammy says, I'm ready to leave now. And as they're at the door, he says, wait. One more thing. And he goes back to the cabinet and he takes out two more candles and he lights those as well. And he says, Kaddish, one more time. And he turns to the kapo and he says, I just said Kaddish for myself. They walk down the stairs, they go into the car, and the kapo is crying. And he wipes away the tears from his eyes and he says, it's not your fault. I forgive you, don't worry. And he goes and he stands in front of Wilhelm Rosenbaum, Yamach Shemoy, and this man sees him and an instant pulls out his gun, pulls the trigger, and that's the end of his life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought us into this world to be an Oymed ben Isayin, to stand up in the most challenging times of our life. If your heart is the Simhain Levav, if your heart is confused, it's hard to rise to the challenge. So on Yom Kippur this year, just clap and say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, clean out my heart. Make my heart pure. Remove the doubts, remove the suffering, let me be strong. And if a person will be willing to make that commitment this year and strong to the Rebbein Shalom, you have nothing to worry about. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give you a year like you've never seen before. And any challenge that he will send your way, it will be made and designed specifically for you because he knows that you are the Oymid bin Yisai and you can stand up to the challenge of life. And in that way, we will pull out the koichais, the potential, the abilities, the strengths that are in us that we never knew that we had before. And in that zechut, in Yitz Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave each and every one of us your wives, your children, your families, your extended families, Gans Klau Yisrael. And Shana Toivah Masuka, a good and a sweet year. A year that we only know bracha, we only know goodness, we only know success. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us the strength every single day to fulfill the Ikar Mitzias HaAdam, the main purpose of why we came here. L'kayim Mitzvah Yisrael, to perform his mitzvahs. L'avay Deser HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And la Amoid bin Isayin to stand strong and proud and tall in the face of adversity, because through that we become the greatest person we can be in tough shin pei gimel haba aleinu, or that we're in already. Latoiva omni.